वेलकम टू जी एल टेक ट्यूटोरियल्स टूडे लेट्स लर्न अबाउट मैप रिड्यूस हाव इट्स इम्प्लीमेंटेड एंड इट्स रियल टाइम एप्लीकेशन इन दिस वीडियो आई कवर वॉट मैप रिड्यूस इज इट्स इम्प्लीमेंटेशन एंड देन मोस्टली आई कॉन्सेंट्रेट ऑन इट्स रियल वर्ल्ड एप्लीकेशन इन ट्विटर फेसबुक एंड गूगल सो लेट्स स्टार्ट ऑफ विद बेसिक वॉट क्वेश्चन वॉट इज मैप रिड्यूस With the enormous amount of data being generated due to various applications, there was a dire need to have high-speed data processing tool. This tool is MapReduce. MapReduce can take large amounts of data and process it in parallel. It is used in many of the applications that we regularly use today, like Google, Facebook, Amazon, and so on. Let's take an example to see how MapReduce works. Say we have a file in which we have many words and we have to count the number of occurrences of the word "the" in it. In the normal case, we give it as an input to a system which counts the occurrence and gives us the result back. But what if this file is very large, say in terabytes or petabytes? A single system would take a lot of time to process this and find the result. but we can't afford that time in real time applications since it would make the application slow and unusable so what we do is we divide our file into multiple chunks and give each chunk as an input to a different system each system calculates the number of bees in its given chunk these individual results are then clubbed together to form our final result if you observe closely we performed our task of counting in two phases The first phase is the map phase where each system is mapped to the task it has to perform and the reduce phase where all the results from map phase are combined. The reduce phase also has a shuffle stage in it. Let's look at another example to see what it is. Say we have a file in which we have to count the number of occurrences of A and B. To apply map reduce on it Say we divided this into two chunks and gave each chunk to a different system. Each calculates the number of A's and B's in its chunk and gives out the intermediate results. But the individual counts of A's and B's have to be brought together in order to reduce them. This is called shuffling that we do as a part of the reduce phase. Then we reduce the shuffled intermediate results into our final result. Let's see how map reduce is actually implemented in a system on a high level. Generally files are divided into small blocks of size 128 MB and each block is stored in a different node and each block is also replicated into replica nodes such that it is rack aware and block aware to make data highly available. For simplicity, let's assume here that the file is stored as two chunks in two nodes. these nodes which have data are called slave nodes there is a master node which as the name suggests controls the slave nodes to start with map reduce master sends rpc calls or basically messages to the slaves asking them to start a map function on the block that they own this map function in the previous example was to count the number of a's and b's the slaves on getting this rpc calculate it and send back the intermediate result to ma master master then does the work of shuffling and provides the slaves with the data it wants to be reduced along with the reducing function to be used the slaves reduce the data accordingly and send back the final results now let's look at some of the real world use cases of map reduce we all love to binge watch shows of netflix According to the recent statistics Netflix has 182 million subscribers worldwide so imagine the amount of data being generated every minute for Netflix but how does Netflix use this data it processes this data to ensure that it understands exactly what its users want Netflix mainly focuses on gathering the following metrics nature of content time day and week of watching this content age gender and location of viewer device and frequent searches by user portions of content being rewatched once this data has been gathered 
Netflix uses this data in a lot of ways. One of the most cited examples of how Netflix uses this data is how it introduced House of Cards TV series. Unlike the standard practices in the TV industry, Netflix didn't launch a pilot. Instead, it commissioned two seasons of the show for an estimated 100 plus million dollars even before the first episode aired. A very big gamble for a show with no guarantee of succeeding, or so you may think. While Netflix's commitment to two seasons of House of Cards was a gamble to outsiders, insiders already knew that the show would succeed. No publicity or advertisement, but they just knew that people would watch it. In the case of House of Cards, by analyzing its data, Netflix realized that a significant percentage of its 33 million subscribers at the time had streamed director David Fincher's work and the films featuring Kevin Spacey were always successful with its audience. It also revealed that the British version of House of Cards on its platform was a very big hit and that those who watched the British version also watched Kevin Spacey's or David Fincher's work. But how did they get this data from the info? In the map phase, each system processed the most viewed shows by the set of people. In the reduce phase, this info was grouped and sorted to get the most viewed show, most popular director and actor. Relying on this data, Netflix concluded that it would be a big hit. And guess what? Netflix was right. Within three months of introducing House of Cards, Netflix added 2 million subscribers to US and got a 93% renewal rate for its shows after the first season. Other series like Orange is the New Black, Arrested Development and The Crone were also similarly introduced based on the user data. Now let's look at our second use case, web crawler. No, not this one. A web crawler or search engine bot downloads and indexes content from all over the internet. A web crawler bot is like someone who goes through all the books in a disorganized library and puts together a card catalog so that anyone who visits the library can quickly and easily find the information they need. To help categorize and sort the library's books by topic, the organizer will read the title, summary, and some of the internal text of each book to figure out what it's about. Search indexing is like creating a library card catalog for the internet so that a search engine knows where on the internet to retrieve information when a person searches for it. If you search about oranges, we should get all the websites that have info about oranges. This classification is done by MapReduce. Each mapper task takes in a set of websites or links and extracts required info like uh, what it contains, date of creation, and so on. In the reduce phase, the websites belonging to similar categories are shuffled together and then sorted in an increasing or decreasing order of popularity or rank. This work is constantly happening since internet keeps changing rapidly. And this is used by all search engines. Now we come to our final use case, Twitter. What better place to know what's happening all around the world than Twitter? A tweet in a Twitter can have hashtags and a certain hashtag used most number of times in tweets globally is said to have highest trend. This data is huge and also keeps on increasing. So processing it in traditional manner would not be possible. So, in order to find the top end trends in a given snapshot, we would need to process all tweets and parse out tokens with hashtags, count all these hashtags and find out the top end hashtags. This work is done by MapReduce, which keeps a track of counts of the hashtags used by all users globally. It also sorts them in descending order and shows them in the Twitter trending page. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe.